Hey everyone, this is Michael. Um, as you probably know, Jollyville Radio is based in Austin. We're going through a lot right now, but from the folks of us that are here, which is about half of us, um, seems like everyone is holding up okay. Please consider um, checking out Austin Mutual Aid or any other similar things to if you're interested in helping us out or helping out other parts of the state. Um, we already had recorded this episode, so figured it's good to go ahead and get it out and uh, put more joy into the world when it's most needed. Hope you enjoy. Thank you for listening to KJVR, Jollyville Radio. I'm Julia Stonewash, coming to you from the Purple Street Studios in downtown Jollyville. (sighs) Why does Sean keep texting me? Anyways, it's the week after Valentine's Day, and you know what that means. Frankie, I told you, going to a speed dating was a bad idea. Anyways, we've got a good show coming up. Sean, here's some advice. Stop calling. Frankie, I gotta deal with this. I'll be back when we return, but first, let's go to sponsors. Adjustable. Adjustable. Portable. Portable. Rigid. Luxury. Announcing the all-new line of luxury music stands by the designer Robert Cheerful. It's time for the Jollyville Annual Homebrew Competition. Let's find out who's the hop, hoppiest brewer this year. Taste local homebrews at their best. That's right, come taste what's hoppening at the Jollyville Annual Homebrew Competition. Competitors from Jollyville, Malakoff, Staverton, and surrounding counties will hop in with their small batch tasty craft beers sure to please even the hoppiest taste buds. So hop on over to the Jollyville Fairgrounds to the homebrew competition. Come give us a taste. Kitties to cuddle, retin' a putty tat has never been easier. Why, you can choose playful Tom. He fetches and walks on a leash and sometimes he even walks on water. Or you can choose Snuggle Samantha, a lap cat deluxe. Why, you know she'll get in and never get off until she gets what she wants. Or you can try our feline extraordinaire, Ornery Oreo. He steals and hides your socks and sometimes even eats them. And there's so many more for hours and hours of feline fun, all guaranteed to comfort and snuggle even the grumpiest lonely human. Kitties to cuddle, now call. Guaranteed to be perfect. Meow, meow, meow. I'm Julia Stonewash. This is KJVR Jollyville Radio, and you're listening to our very first episode of Future Chats, where we reach out to future public figures and let our listeners ask them questions. With us today from 340 years in the future is Paul Fredrickson, the 17th, well-known handyman, relationship counselor, and mayoral candidate. Paul, thanks for taking time to connect with us today. It is my very great pleasure, Julia. Paul, since we're all quite new to this, can you explain to our listeners how this works and, in fact, how this is even possible? Certainly, Julia. It really is quite simple compared to actual time travel, which will be invented about 400 years ago. With just a fraction of the technology required for a time machine, we can establish a temporal communication link. Then, it is just like making a regular phone call. Huh. Well, that does seem pretty simple. First caller, you're on the air. Hi, Paul. This is Hyde Millwood. Aren't you worried by visiting the past, or I mean the present, you would create a terrible paradox or alter the timeline in some way? That is a very good question, Hyde. When time travel first became reality, 
we all had a great deal of concern about those sorts of things. But then nothing happened. And slowly it became clear that time just takes care of itself. Oh, so that would confirm the fatalist viewpoint that we have no control over our actions or destiny. Quite the contrary, Hyde. You have complete freedom to have acted in any way you choose. Time just accommodates your actions so that no paradoxes have existed. This is breaking my brain a little bit. Howard McNeil, you're on the air. Um, I, I don't really understand. Which part? The paradox part or the time travel? No, obviously I understand the time travel paradoxes themselves, but I mean, how the notions of free will might be impacted by the lack thereof. Well, you know how you can watch a movie on a two-dimensional screen like an old-fashioned TV? Yeah. That is actually a projection of a 3D world onto a 2D display. If you live inside the 2D world, everything seems fine, but you have no awareness of the third dimension. According to one theory, a similar analogy can be used for our experience of time. The infinite whenever holds all possible timelines, but we exist in a projection of it onto simple four-dimensional space-time. No matter our actions, the projection is always self-consistent. Yeah, yeah, wow, now I understand. Thanks for explaining, Paul. You are very welcome, Howard. Okay, I'm, I don't even know. Uh, who's next? Hi, this is Anderson Millingsley, but you can call me Anderson. I just really, really like time travel, and I'm excited to be talking to Paul Fredrickson, the 17th. Okay, so, so what's your question? Oh, shoot. I hadn't thought that far in advance. Okay, last caller, and no pressure, but please, have a real question. Hi, Paul. This is Peggy Breaker. <clears throat> so, are you saying if I try to win a yard competition by cheating and it didn't work, I could just go back and try something different? And there will never be any evidence that I use time travel? Yes, Peggy, that is exactly right. You can do whatever you chose without any concern about time paradoxes, and you have no memory at all of your use of time travel. <laughs> Yippee! It can seem quite liberating, Peggy, but just because you can't remember time travel doesn't mean you forget the difference between right and wrong. Do you have any other questions for me, Peggy? Nah, never mind. That concludes our first episode of Future Chats. Thanks again to our wonderful and informative guest, Paul Fredrickson the 17th. For KJVR and Jollyville, I'm Julia Stonewash. We have seen you next time on Future Chats. <laughs>
So now back to the story coming from the laboratory, a funny rhyme I just wanted to make. We say the folk of the village of Jollyville are semi-fictional but never fake. These two random bits are like the comedy skits coming straight out of Jollyville. A little hit and a miss and a sprinkle of this. We want to leave you with a happy feel. And then I got one more stanza and then we go to the chorus again. J-O-L-L-Y-D-I-L-L-E at radio and you can Google the show. Check out the website definitely. Yeah, man. J O L L Y V I L L E. Funny skits and jokes, and every episode closes out with community B. Wow, that was awesome. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks. I really worked hard on that, dude. I'm glad you like it. I can't wait to hear the rest of it. Yeah, man, it'll be ready right after the community uh, episode, uh, segment. Welcome back to another episode of Applesauce, the program that's just a mishmash of good bits. I'm your host, Chauncey Applegate, and we're broadcasting to you from the Purple Street studio of Jollyville Radio, KJVR. Today, my lucky guest is Harry Lachat, a wildlife adventure specialist for Jollyville Parks and Wildlife. Welcome, Harry. Hello, Chauncey. I'm excited to be here on Applesauce. Why don't you tell our listeners about how animals became such a big part of your life? Well, it all started with my older brother. He had several unusual pets which he would get me to help him take care of. Unusual pets? The first one I really remember well was a big boa constrictor. My brother converted the closet into a terrarium where it lived. A boa constrictor? Wow, so your first animal love was a snake? Nah. Actually, I find snakes kind of, uh, boring. But I really love those cuddly little gerbils he raised to feed it. Oh my. Yes, it was an early lesson in attachment and then letting go. And the boa also really helped me develop good observation skills and quick reactions. How intriguing. To wean the snake off live food, I tied a string to a hard-boiled egg and dragged it through the terrarium so the boa would think it was alive. Yikes. Oh, I know it sounds alarming, but non-venomous snakes are harmless. Unless they are huge, of course. I'm afraid of snakes. I could never have one as a pet. Oh, come on now, Chancy. They won't try to eat you or strangle you unless you're small enough to be a meal. And they're not slimy. In fact, their skin has an interesting and pleasant feel. They can bite, but it doesn't hurt you once you get used to it. That sounds a bit ominous. Well, really the alligator was a much bigger risk to our safety. The alligator? Oh, yes. My brother also had a pet alligator. He kept it in an old bathtub in the spare basement room. But one day... One day what? It escaped the bathtub. Heavens to Spoopy! One day I came home and I found my brother watching the pet alligator from the top of the basement steps. Well, I say it was a pet, but in reality the alligator would have been as happy to bite off a hand as to be pet by one. That was one of my earliest lessons in the fundamental difference between wild and domesticated animals, regardless of whether or not they are called pets. Oh my, what happened to the alligator? Well... We drew straws. I threw the towel, and my brother had to jump on top of it. We put it back in the tub and added more weight to the glass lid so it wouldn't escape again. But she got too big, and my brother donated her to a nearby aquarium. That sounds like it was a hard decision. Yes, yes it was. And I know he really missed it for a while. It's a good thing he still had the iguana and the skink to keep him company. Especially after we lost the newt down the drain. Your brother had an iguana as a pet? And I don't even know what a skink is. 
Oh yes, iguanas are great. Very docile compared to the alligator. And much easier to feed than a snake, given that they eat vegetables and plants and whatnot. Much easier than dealing with the mealworms. Mealworms, Harry? Oh yes, we had a mealworm colony under the kitchen counter for feeding the skink. You just had to be careful which container to open when sneaking into the kitchen for a late night snack. Goodness, Harry, that was a splendid, if unexpected, diversion into some of your childhood animal influences. I'm sure you have lots more uh, conventional animal wisdom to share. Would you consider being my guest again another time? I would be delighted, Chauncey. Do you have any final parting wisdom for our listeners? If you have a pet that you can't take care of anymore, always surrender it to an animal shelter. We've been seeing a lot of these ferret chinchilla hybrids running around. Oh? And it's terrible. These ferchillas are out of control. Whoever's responsible for releasing them will be in big trouble. Well, I I can't imagine who that would be. Anywho, uh, uh, time's up. Bye, Harry. Thanks for listening to KJVR for another spectacular episode of Applesauce with our fantastic guest, Harry Lachat. I'm your host, Chauncey Applegate, and I hope you'll tune in to hear me again sometime on another episode. This installment of Applesauce was brought to you by... Bubble Ducky, you're the one. You make bath time so much fun. Bath time can be even better with Malakoff Bubble Bath Factory's new Bubble Frenzy, our upcoming line of high-potency bubbles. Visit Malakoff Bubble Factory today. Live on the air in 3, 2, 1. This is Jollyville Community Beat with Uncle Lassar turning the spotlight on good people doing great work in the real world. Joining us by way of Las Cruces, New Mexico, we have Lucia Carmona, Director of Community Engagement at the Raices del Saber Genasli Community School. Lucia, como esta? And welcome to Community Beat. Ah, Tlazo Camati. <laughs> Buenas gracias. This is a Nahuatl word as well. Your Spanish is actually nice. Thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm passing. Yes. So I wanted to say there's something we always say about this point. And it's I'm good. I'm good. So I, I Googled it. Soy bueno. Soy bueno. I'm good. I'm good. Soy buena persona. <laughs> OK. OK. Thank you. So the idea of uh, for a child to know the roots, know their roots, uh, we agree 100 percent on the importance of that because a child needs that information of what they've accomplished as a people to continue to achieve. So we agree 100% on that. Let me ask you about dual language, two-way immersion, the 910 model. Yes. What is that? The 910 model is um, the immersion into the language. In this case, uh, is the Spanish language. The kinder students start start receiving their instruction in 90% of Spanish and 10% English. And, and uh, it decreasing uh, each grade will decreasing the, uh, the Spanish and increasing the English up to the fourth grade where they started to be 50-50. Uh, the goal is that on the fifth grade, the student become biliterate been able completely uh, understand, write and read in Spanish and English. There's a lot of, of parents that don't speak Spanish and they, they love the idea to, I mean, they appreciate actually that opportunity <laughs> to become multilingual, not only bilingual. And uh, that's why they are bringing their kids to our school uh, to learn Spanish, to be merged into the language. So you find that the children are also teaching the parents? In a way, actually, we have to, we have as part of the Concilio de Padres, uh, like I said, the Parents Council, we started like with what we call Escuela de Padres or School for Parents, uh, where we are uh, putting together workshops or um, classes because we have parents that wants to learn English and parents that wants to learn Spanish. And I, I facilitate that effort and there's different kind of uh, classes or opportunities to, for professional development. Um, that's how we do. 
So the school is very much involved in the community. What uh, population do you serve in terms of the grades? I, I know you mentioned kindergarten and up to the fourth grade, um, and of course the parents, but, but, but specifically for students, what population? Yes, we started, uh, you mentioned the, the population in terms of numbers. We started, uh, this is our second year of operation. And uh, we started, uh, well, the goal is, is K-5, right? We will study the, the, the top, I mean, when we get the fifth year of operation. Right now we have in the second, we have kinder first and second. Each classroom, the goal is that each classroom has no more than 20 students. Um, it's a model of the school. To find out more information, where can we find the Raisa School on the internet? Yes, uh, www.raicesdelsaber.org. That's great. It's Roots of Knowledge in Spanish. Excellent. Excelente. Excelente, sí. <laughs> Excelente. And, uh, and also the they can call directly to the, I mean, there is a lot of contact in the website. There is a, a YouTube channel to learn more about our origin, for instance, not only as Mexicans, but more concepts, like universal concepts you will find there, including the, the mathematic uh, approach that we are using in the school. And uh, the, the name of the YouTube channel is Tloque Nahuoke. So I will send you the, the link, but then Tloque Nahuoke, T-L-O-K-E. That is Tloque with T for Tito. And then Nahuoke, N-A-U-O-K-E. Lucia Carmona, gracias, and we wish you the best of the best. Thank you very much. We'll see you. This has been Jollibee. I'm sorry? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this, this has been Jollibee Community Beat with Uncle Asar and Deepness. No one can do everything. But everyone can do something. La Paz. Is that right? Is that peace? KJVR. Jollyville Radio. That Shiki Man music, baby. Uncle Sar and the 2 1. Dig this. Now what you hear is not TV, instead it's radio. Broadcast across the internet, it's what you call a podcast show. It's a series of files and audio, spoken digital episodes. It's KJVR in Jollyville, and Michael Cosa is the CEO. So elevate your feet and unwind your mind, and let me tell you how it all began. Give me a funky countdown, flipping all around. Minus one, nine, three, five, ten. This is what I want to say. J-O-L-L-Y-V-I-L-L-E. J-O-L-L-Y-V-I-L-L-E. When it was quarantine, Rona on the scene. You know, Michael sent out a tweet. Inviting all his friends and a couple of kin on a Zoom call. Let's all meet. And from there to here, coming far and near. They all signed on to the call. Some cameras off and on and muted microphones. About then, Michael started to talk. He said, I ask you here to put a bug in your ear. You see, I'm kind of nearly at my wits. With cabin fever and the walls all closing in, I'm feeling gloomy that I gotta admit. All the hand washing and social distancing created all I needed for my brain. And I believe it's true, at least for most of you, I'm thinking all of us feel the same. So let me lay it out, my big idea about a new podcast developing. I want to do this thing before I go insane, huh? What? Did the phone ring? Everybody say J-O-L-L-Y-V-I-L-L-E at radio. And you can Google the show. Check out the website. Definitely. Let's keep it going now. J-O-L-L-Y-V-I-L-L-E. Funny skits and jokes in every episode wraps up with Community B. So now back to the story coming from the laboratory. Funny rhyme I just wanted to make. We say the folk in the village of Jollyville are semi-fictional but never fake. These two random bits are like the comedy skits coming straight out of Jollyville. A little hit and a miss and a sprinkle of this. We want to leave you with a happy feel. Now it's all a blast. The ensemble cast is separated by one degree. Because Michael Crosa had no money. He recruited everybody that he knows who would work for free. Then the stars aligned in the Jollyville sky and a radio podcast born. 
Published once a week from the purple streets, closet studio recording platform. So that's the way it goes, now everybody knows how it all came down to be. Michael Cross's invitation sent out all across the nation, generated syncopated comedy. So put it in the wind, about your kith and kin, and that's precisely what the maestro did. Tune it to the show, till everyone you know is like a chocolate candy Katie did. Everybody say J O double L Y V I double L E at radio, and you can Google the show. Check out the website, definitely make it funky, y'all. J O double L Y V I double L E. Funny skits and jokes in every episode wraps up with community B. One more time, say J O double L Y V I double L E. Show. Check out the website, definitely. That's what I'm talking about. J O double L Y D I double L E. Funny skits and jokes in every episode wraps up with the community B. Break it down now. J O double L Y D I double L E. Yes, sir. J O double L Y D I double L E. Keep it moving, y'all. J O double L Y D I double L E. J O double L Y. How was that? All right. Later. The cast and creative team behind Jollyville Radio includes Uncle Asar al Kabalon, Emily Ansonick, Justin Carter, Michael Crosa, Michelle Darcy, Richard Dayries, Brian Green, Alan Kay, Pilar Kepperda, Robert Leary, Thomas Schlitt, Michael Stanley, Matt Waite, and Kay Wise. Lead editing by Dr. Monse Santian, with social media help by Emily Ansonick. Directed by Michael Crosa. The recording was made in accordance with social distancing. Special appearance by Bob Don of the Bob Short Story Hour and Hidden Oaks podcast. The song Jollyville Delight was written and performed by Uncle Asar Alcabalon. If you're enjoying Jollyville Radio, consider supporting us on Patreon. For a small monthly pledge, you can have a big impact on the success of the show. Plus, depending on your pledge, you can get bonuses like access to the script archives, letters from characters, and even a chance to hear your own voice on the show. Just go to patreon.com and search for Jollyville Radio. Jollyville Radio is a production of Jollyville Brass Quintet, member of Austin Creative Alliance. We are based in Austin, Texas. For KJVR in Jollyville, I'm Jimmy Piecrust. We'll see you next time on Jollyville Radio. Hey, y'all. This is Jensen Mutton. Hope you're ready to play some bingo. Why don't you head on over to jollyvilleproductions.com slash bingo to find out a little bit more. I know Grandmama Mutton sure is excited. Yeah!